So for chapter 10, lesson 1, uh, here we're going to be comparing two populations or groups. So everything we look at is going to be significance tests and confidence intervals for two proportions in 10.1 and then for two sample means in 10.2. Um, so our guiding question here is, how can we use significance tests and confidence intervals to compare two different populations or groups? That pretty much covers the whole chapter. And we're looking uh, specifically at proportions for this lesson. Uh, so we're looking at the sampling distri distribution of a difference between two proportions. Remember the sampling distribution would be a specified sample size n and it would tell us how the statistic varies in all possible samples of that size. Uh, so think about all the rules that we studied for transformations and how uh, variances always add in order to determine spread, how um, our, our center would be the center of our first distribution minus the center of our second if we're defining it as that and how our shape would depend on the two original distributions. Now um, pause here and open the outline in Schoology and we're going to look at an example problem what we use this for. So aspirin is well known to help uh, prevent clotting and prevent strokes from happening when a blood clot gets to the brain. Um, it oftentimes can cause a stroke so um, they're looking to see if this this drug here using that reduces the number of strokes even further in conjunction with aspirin so here's a randomized study randomized comparative experiment where they looked at aspirin alone and they looked at uh, aspirin with this drug and they want to know is there a significant difference in the proportion of strokes between these two treatments um, we're going to generate a confidence interval and we're going to go ahead and have a significance test for this so we're going to do state, plan, do, and conclude, just like every other problem we've done. Uh, here we're going to do an inter interval and a significance test. So we're going to go over the do step twice, once for a significance test, once for a confidence interval, and we're going to discuss um, what's a slight difference in the conditions for them. And then you're going to use your calculator to go ahead and calculate whether there's a significant difference based on the proportion of patients who had strokes uh, from those two groups. So let's take a look at our state section. So our parameters here are P1, we're going to use uh, for the patients the proportion that are taking just aspirin. We're going to use our first P hat to, um, to estimate that proportion. And P2 will be the ones that took both drugs. Now, for these problems, when we're comparing two proportions, we, we oftentimes call our null hypothesis here the statement of no difference, meaning that P1 minus P2 equals zero. If we can show that this is not plausible, then we can assume that we actually proved that there's a difference between our two. So our null hypothesis will always be that there's no difference. It's a statement of no difference. That would mean that aspirin and aspirin and this other drug in conjunction have no difference on the effect on, on whether or not somebody is likely to have a stroke. If we can show with our sample statistic that that's not plausible with the data from the table we looked at above, then we'll be able to reject that claim and assume that there is a difference. Now we could follow this up um, with another significance test to show whether just aspirin was better or the two drugs together were better. In this case, we saw the word differs. So we just want to see if it's different from the true proportion, so we're going to use not equal. Now keep in mind that's going to be what? A one-sided test or a two-sided test? It's going to be a two-sided test because we're interested in the right side of the normal curve and the left side of the normal curve um, if it's different from zero at all. Now, Z or T, or remember zap tax, Z for a proportion, always Z for a proportion, so we're going to use Z, and that's since we always know the standard deviation. Now let's look at the random condition. Well, we're told it's a randomized comparative experiment. So that means we should have an unbiased estimator of P hat 1 minus P hat 2 should be um, a legit sampling distribution. We should have an unbiased estimator of the true parameter. The normal condition. Now, here's where this is a little different. We're not dealing with just one proportion, so we have to check it for both proportions. So there's two ways to check this condition. The first way is to check both proportions. The second way is to check the pooled, um, the pooled proportion, which we'll look at, or the combined proportion, which we'll look at in just a second. So here we can look at the two proportions. P1 and P2, P hat 1, P hat 2 from our table. And we can see that all four of these numbers, all these two numbers would be much bigger than 10, 
when multiplied out to check the normal condition. Remember, n times p hat equal is greater than or equal to 10, and n times 1 minus the quantity 1 minus p hat is greater than or equal to 10. Um, these would all give us values that are bigger than 10 in the complement, meaning this minus 206 um, times the sample size would also be bigger. So in breakdown, this is how we'd show that. So this shows n times p hat, n times 1 minus p hat for the first proportion. n times p hat, n times 1 minus p hat for the second. So we know it's approximately normal. Now here we can look at, um, there's no replacement, so the 10% condition. It's also that it's a randomized experiment, so there shouldn't be a lurking variable there that would have influenced whether one group would be biased or not. So both of those things play in. So we assume we're not sampling more than 10% of the population. <clears throat> and since we use random assignment, the two groups of patients can be viewed as independent for this experiment. <clears throat> so our conditions are satisfied. Now another way to show this normal condition would have been to show the pool, the pooled proportion. So that's just pooling the, the sample. So count of successes in the numerator. So the numerators add, which were 206 and 157. And then the denominators add, which is the total sample size, 1,650 plus 1,649. And that would give us our pooled um, sampling, sample proportion. And we can use that to find the standard deviation, the z-score, in this way. So the main difference here is that for a significance test, our null hypothesis is always going to be the statement of no difference. And that's the statement up here, that when you subtract the proportions, there's no difference between them. We could also state this as P1 equals P2. So that's another way to write this. So null hypothesis P1 equals P2. If they're equal, then when we subtract them, their difference is zero. Uh, so that shows that they're just a statement of no difference. So that's one key difference, is that and we're always going to have an equal sign here. The sign here is going to depend on whether we're just concerned whether it differs or if we have an alternative hypothesis that uh, P1 is bigger than P2, so that would be greater than then. If P1 was smaller than P2, we would use less than. Not equal to sign would give us a two-sided test, whereas less than or greater than would give us a one-sided test. Now, when we do a confidence interval for this, instead of having a confidence interval for one proportion, it's going to be the confidence interval for the, um, the difference. So the range of values that we're confident that the difference is between. So we'd be estimating P1 minus P2. So go ahead and pause your video now and answer the multiple choice here about the main difference between the goal of calculations involving a single proportion and two proportions. Uh, here are your five answer choices. Uh, this goes into what I directly just talked about, so if you're ever tr having trouble answering these, think about what your null hypothesis should always be. Um, think, about what an alt what, think about what a confidence interval would be estimating and use those ideas to answer the multiple choice. So pause right now as I'm about to go on in the problem and then I'm going to have you answer the free response. So try calculating the pooled statistic. So that's down here where you add the numerators. x1 plus x2, that's the numerator proportion 1 plus the numerator proportion 2. And then add the sample sizes below. That gives us our combined proportion. And we can use that to determine uh, standard deviation, as you see here. Here's the z-score. So our mean would be p1 minus p2, whatever we get, p hat 1 minus p2. Uh, zero is from our null hypothesis, the statement of no difference, that there's no difference between the two. So this would measure our distance from that divided by our standard deviation, or our z-score. Now, you're going to go ahead and do that for um, the, using your calculator. So you're going to be doing this twice once uh, for a z-test and once for a z-interval. That'll give us um, the significance test and a z-interval. Now here we're using two proportions. So you're going to be looking at two prop z-test and you're going to be looking at two prop z-int on your calculator. So just always remember proportion, prop, and we always use z. Test meaning a significance test, int meaning an interval. So that's stat test to get there. Now this is going to give us an estimate uh, for the significance test, the probability that the null hypothesis is true, that's p hat 1 minus p hat 2 equals 0, given that we got this difference in proportion. So here's p hat 1 minus p hat 2, and there's the difference. So to do that, you're going to use x1 as the numerator of the first proportion, n1 as the denominator, or the sample size, and then x2 is the numerator of the second, n2 is the numerator as the sample size of the second. So here and I gave you the values on the right. 
your free response answer should be two sentences. Uh, just hit enter in between a couple times. One sentence should give us the significance test, uh, two prop Z test. So you're going to get your p-value and you're going to go ahead and interpret it uh, at the 5% level. At alpha equals 0.05. Uh, your second sentence should be your interval and I'd like a 95% confidence interval um, for this problem. So what's the 95% confidence interval to estimate P, P1 minus P2? And you're going to use 2 prop Z int in order to do that. Um, so go ahead and read over the summary for 10.1, look over some example problems or look back in this. Outline if you need a little help. Open the outline in Schoology and see if that also helps you. And then submit your answer. Remember to submit, send me a copy of my responses. So you have this to, to study from and just to show me in case anything going, goes wrong with your submission.